Hello all, uh, Jeff Harvey from Down Under Visa, which is the premier registered migration agency practice in Manila, specialising in visas for Australian Filipino couples. Okay, today we're going to be talking to you about the issue of lies and how this relates to Australian visa applications. Titled Lies or Fact Flexibility, Filipino style. Look, us Australians are a pretty straight-talking, straight-acting lot, especially older Australians. We might be given to exaggeration about some things, like drop beers, etc. Yeah, our secret. Uh, but when it comes to being truthful, you can generally rely on what most Australian people tell you. Filipinos, a different set of priorities quite often. Um, and please, nobody take offence about this. I'm not putting any value judgments or saying who's good or who's bad, who's doing the right thing, who's doing the wrong thing. Different cultures view things differently, so please don't take offence at this. Uh, I love the Filipino people. I'll live here. Anybody who knows me knows this. Um, yeah, different set of priorities. Filipinos will place aspects like saving face, known as here, uh, for themselves and also for you and other people involved. Uh, they place that very, very high. Now, owning up and you know taking it on the chin is not something they were taught when growing up like we do, like we were, sorry. Uh, a different approach and one, one which can cause and does cause problems and hopefully I can explain some of the reasons why. Essential knowledge for Australian Filipino couples especially those who want a visa from Philippines to Australia one day soon. Australians and trust, truth and lies. And again, again I'm talking older Australians here particularly. Uh, I, get a little, um, I get a little confused with some of the younger Australians who intend to take on values which are not traditionally Australian, but it's still there though. Uh, an Australian man's word is his bond and his character will stand and fall according to how much his word is worth. Uh, do what you say you will do and paint a clear and honest picture of the facts with your words and to fellow Aussies, uh, you're all right, mate. Um, man of integrity, you and friends, neighbours and colleagues will trust. Fail to keep your word, uh, cover up mistakes with lies uh, save yourself and leave someone else vulnerable to get yourself out of trouble or to gain some unfair advantage. Look, you do this and you will leave an Australian shocked and horribly disappointed. Uh, the average Australian was not expecting that. Um, the closer he is or closer he was to you, the more shocked he will be. Uh, friendships fail and romantic relationships fail when trust is gone. It's an important thing for Filipinos to understand. It's not something to ever mess about with and think it will be understood. It really will not be understood at all by an Australian. Uh, the other thing, we're not really prepared for it. We're not um, not very good at seeing it coming. We believe what we hear and what, get, what gets presented to us. It's not natural for us to think, well, you know, what do they really mean by that? Um, someone says it's raining outside or it's 6 p.m. we don't go and check um, and we're like that about most matters. If a lady says I have no kids we don't go examining her for stretch marks to see if she's lying. The doctors will, keep that in mind, when it comes to uh, getting health examinations for visas they most certainly do so something to think about before telling stories. Uh, an Australian man will not, um, we're not a suspicious lot, full stop, just not our nature. Uh, Filipinos and trust, um, look it can be challenging. I think most who watch my videos and hear my podcasts and read my blog articles uh, which are on www.downonabeta.com.au uh, For those who haven't been there we've got, there are, I think about 700 plus articles on all aspects of Australian visas for Australian Filipino couples and things like this one here which are about Filipino culture and how 
Australians need to learn to understand how to relate um, and also for Filipinos to understand Australians. Look, if you haven't already already subscribed, then there's a button down there. If you click on that, then you'll get updates every time there's a new video. Okay, um, and please feel free to share this with anybody that uh, with your partner, anybody who you think will be uh, would be interested. So, um, yeah, where was I? Sorry. Um, yes, uh, yeah, Filipinos. Uh, hang on, sorry, I'm completely lost here. Where was I? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, anyone who anyone who watches my videos, hears my podcasts, reads my blogs, know that I really do love the Filipino people. I have my Aussie bluntness, of course, and I'm probably blunt even amongst your average Aussie. Uh, but I'm in no way playing superior white man with a lesson or two for the locals to show them the right way. Uh, yeah, there were things Filipinos should learn. If they're in a relationship with Australia and Australian, and vice versa, it's a lot of compromise in any relationship, and most especially a cross-cultural relationship one. Uh, so no, not playing superior white man, not at all. I like to think we can learn from each other, and today's article is no exception. Uh, why does this difference occur? This difference about re regarding trust. Uh, it's about it's about Filipinos caring about feelings, their own feelings and the feelings of others, and this is a society where harmony and turning that frown upside down is a part of, of the way of life. Uh, confronting people and telling harsh truth, no, it's uh, not the way at all. Um, owning up and admitting things, not the way either. Uh, people don't, don't expect you to either. Um, they won't, they won't expect you to be because they'll think, well, they don't want to see you embarrassed, so they won't push you about things. And Filipinos get a little bit shocked when you, when you do because they're embarrassed and they're thinking, well, don't they realise, you know, don't you realise that you're making them more embarrassed? That's really more the priority. The priority is keeping everyone happy and to maintain harmony. And uh, uh, perfect truth is a low priority in comparison with that. Okay, so the other reason, look, each culture has its own interpretation of what is okay and what isn't. You know, seat belts in Australia, it's a must. Here, well, maybe just the driver, if at all. You jaywalk in Hong Kong and they'll, you know, they'll arrest you. You jaywalk in Australia and no one really cares. Uh, I speak disrespectfully of a politician in Germany and they think you're an anarchist. You do the same in Australia and everyone agrees with you. Uh, we're not shocked at all. Um, you know, anyone with a whistle in, in the Philippines can stop traffic. You see security guards walking out of the middle of the traffic and blowing a whistle and everyone stops. Well, yeah, um, you try that one in Australia and see how far you'd get. But, you know, submitting false information on the government form uh, no one is even slightly shocked because basically everybody does it. Uh, typical situations here. Single mother. Uh, she she knows the boy won't marry won't marry her, but tells her family that he will soon. Less embarrassing for her and uh, less disappointing for her parents. In other words, they believe a wedding will happen, and they can tell others that a wedding is imminent. Child is born. Brother registers the birth and states that the single mother and biological father are actually married. Now he does this to save embarrassment to the single mother and um, the grandparents and later on for the child having a birth certificate saying, you know, that that's, that's my dad, not a birth certificate, showing no father at all. A uh, single mother meets an Australian and tells a complicated story to explain the situation to save herself embarrassment and to save him criticising her brother and saying it's all his silly fault for, you know, what the hell was he thinking doing such a thing? Well, he was trying to help out in a, uh, a way that is acceptable here, uh, not in Australia. And hence, we run into, into problems with an Australian government who looks at things very differently to how people look at things here. Uh, another scenario, a girl from a poor family wants to work in you know, somewhere, Taiwan, wherever, 
uh, they'll only take employees who are 25 or older, and she's 21. So she goes off and late registers her birth to show herself as 25. She gets a fake baptismal certificate to confirm that age. It's a passport showing the full state, uh, false age based on the false supporting documents. And a stranger man comes into her life and she doesn't want him to know in case he gets mad at her, so... Yeah, she doesn't say anything. <laughs> Until suddenly they find out later that uh, the documents are falsified and, uh, you know, everything, uh, everything falls apart as a result. Uh, another scenario. A single mother has children in her care, meets an Australian man. Um, she lies about the existence of her children because the, her mother and her aunt tell her that he will certainly not accept her as a single mother. Visa application is lodged in the medical examination, as I mentioned before. Uh, it shows that she had kids, but she didn't declare them. Visas refused. A three-year ban for making a false statement. Australian sponsor is shocked and horribly, horribly disappointed about the lies. And in a lot of cases, he, he, I've, I've, seen, I've seen this happen. And the man said to me, I would have been fine. But we, we had one where, oh no, okay, I won't go do it because it's personal. But, but anyway, but it, um, yeah, she had four kids and uh, didn't declare them. And um, he said, I, I would have been fine about it. So, you know, they ended up having a you know, to their credit, to his credit, he was patient enough to understand and try again. And uh, they tried again three years later. So they wasted three years because of a bit of dumb advice which uh, yeah, I mean it seemed dumb but they, they, were, they were just trying to help yeah. and that's what happens uh, a girl has a child in her teens not married and probably still at school you know, her parents decide to save her the embarrassment and give the child a more secure future by claiming that they are in fact the child's parents now they register the birth of the child and claim that they are the parents Visa application claims she has no kids. A medical examination <laughs> once again shows otherwise. Australian husband is the last to know and he, he's absolutely crushed because what happened? I mean, she lied to him. She didn't trust him. Um, he feels like a complete stranger. Everybody knew what was going on except him. He feels like he's been taken for a fool. Um, but again, they made that decision. They made it for the right reasons at, at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, out of kindness for everybody involved. And, and uh, but unfortunately, it, it, it all fell apart. And, but yeah, it happens. We see it far too often. Now, look, are the Filipinos always innocent? Are they always semi-innocent? Uh, no, sadly not. Um, there are those who are playing games and possibly those who do have sinister intentions. There are those who are still married and are very deliberately hiding this. The main men, their relationship is still going on and you're being taken for a ride. I knew one poor chap where, goodness me, you know, she, she was still married. He used to come and visit her. He was he paid, he paid for an annulment for her and it, it never happened. and. Uh, you know, in the meantime, as soon as he turned up, you know, husband would disappear and everybody who knew her was keeping the big secret um, because she was enjoying getting money. It was a very, very cruel way to treat a man, and unfortunately, fortunately, things worked out quite nicely for him or somebody else. But yeah, it, it, it happens. Uh, in most cases, um, being still married is due to the complicated and expensive annulment processes. In most cases it is, but again, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes um, a woman has come to Australia and uh, she's gone all the way through to permanent residency. Uh, the moment that comes through, she's, she's gone and next thing you know, she's sponsoring her actual husband uh, to come to Australia. So. Some people can be quite sinister and quite uh, 
nasty. But I, I, I'm happy to say from our observation that it's definitely the minority. Um, in most cases of lying, intentions were not bad. Uh, were not bad intentions. No harm meant, no harm expected. Uh, the decisions were made at the time to save time, save money, things like late registering rather than going through an adoption process. Normally it's because it costs too much, whereas re-registering a birth with slightly different details, uh, that's cheap. Um, save time and money, complications, certainly to save embarrassment. Uh, and in most cases the girl didn't do this by herself. There was input from parents and other relatives. Uh, and so in some cases the girl had absolutely no knowledge of it or, and, and or she had no decision-making ability because the family just made that decision for her. Um, and she said, yes, mum, yes, dad, yes, auntie. And she did as she was told, out of her hands, and now it's her problem. It's dumped in her lap, poor thing. Uh, no doubt the relatives are giving more bad advice as to how to deal with it, maybe telling more lies or coming up with fake documents and statements to further bury the problem. This happens. Uh, Filipino lies. How does the decent man, excuse me, how does the decent man deal with it? Uh, I started off by sharing some wise advice I heard once by asking you two questions. One, do you truly love her? Two, does she truly love you? If the honest answer to either of those questions is no, then you should walk away. Uh, cut your losses. If the love isn't there, it, it ain't worth it. Don't kid yourself into thinking it's going to, it will happen somewhere down the track. If you have an inauspicious start like that, um, it's very unlikely it's going to get better. Um, yeah, basically, you look, you can't make up for a love deficit by loving even more. You can't say, I'll provide 80% of the love and that will somehow make it, make it all different. You can't fill in the gaps. The gap shouldn't be there, especially at this stage of your relationship. Persist and you will regret it all later on. My advice to people has always been that in early stages of the relationship, both of you are in, 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 on your best behaviour. Uh, it won't get better. If anything happens, it will get worse. Once you two have settled in and you're used to each other, uh, it's not all going to suddenly become marvellous. Somebody doesn't really love you from the beginning, and someone's using you. Well, it's, it's, there's nowhere to go from there. Just be realistic. Hard, but be realistic. Um, but look, if the honest answer is, is yes, you do truly love her, you know she loves you, then you have to do whatever it, it takes, whatever is, is legally necessary to sort it all out. Uh, having someone who you truly love and who truly loves you is a precious gift. Look, I'm grateful every day, month and year for the gift that I have uh, in my wife and I'd walk over hot coals for her, uh, knowing that she would do the same for me. Uh, she makes and will make and has always made tremendous sacrifices and I know how incredibly important I am to her. She's not perfect. Uh, well, goodness me, neither am I. You know, I might be incredibly handsome, but, um, you know, I have my faults too. And she tolerates them as I tolerate hers. But the fact is, there's no question about the love. Um, I would certainly have the patience and strength and forbearance to go through a pack of hurtful lies and maybe some dodgy documents that resulted from those lies. Um, without question, if the love is there. So be honest with yourself about that. That'll help you to know how to deal with it. Um, Cross-cultural adjustments and solutions. You married a Filipina. She married an Aussie. You're both way out of your comfort zone and you both need to learn to look at the world differently. There's no right way or wrong way. You know, it's not us, you know, the smart white people who can show, you know, show them Asians the right way. It doesn't work like that. Uh, we have things 
we have wonderful things in our culture, we have stupid things too. Uh, Filipinos have wonderful things in their culture, plus a few questionable things too. Um, again, no right way, no wrong way. Um, yes, we Aussies believe our word is my bond straight shoot away is correct, and to us it is. And she will also be wondering why you're so worked up about some lies that were just there to make life easy on everybody. Why can't you just let it go? That's how she'll be thinking. Same confusion because we each have our own interpretation normal. Uh, you'll get this sort of thing constantly when you're in an Australian-Filipino relationship. Uh, whether it's obligation to family or profound concern about what other people think or what's appropriate to talk about and what isn't appropriate to talk about. You will both have to deal with this, so start getting used to it. But bottom line, once again, did she mean to cause harm? Was she acting maliciously? Or was she scamming you? Or was she trying to avoid bureaucracy, trying to save money, trying to save some embarrassment for everybody involved? Look, if you love a girl, she loves you, then you really do have an obligation to forgive her and help her, knowing that she will in time forgive you for a multitude of sins and misdemeanors which either you have committed or you will. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoy. Please share this with uh, with those who you're close to, those who you think will benefit from this. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, and if you do need help with an Australian visa, if you're in an Australian-Filipina relationship and you'd like help, please go to our website www.downundervisa.com.au and look at doing one of our free online visa assessments. Thanks very much.